In case you are somehow unaware, the guy who makes electric cars now owns Twitter. This is disappointing for me, because Twitter is the social media platform I enjoyed more than any other. It's the only one where I made new friendships, and it has done more for my career than LinkedIn could ever. I've met many friends, including one of my best friends and the co-host of my podcast on Twitter. It's where my writing first really got recognized, and it helped lead me to my current job. It's now run by someone I really do not like, Elon Musk. Twitter was one of the best social media platforms because it was relatively flat. You could say basically anything you wanted to basically anyone. I got to have conversations with venture capitalists, billionaires, CEOs, regulators, lawmakers, politicians, and John Doe's of every stripe. It was really liberating in that sense. It felt like some kind of intellectual crucible, even though it regularly fell short of actually being that. There was this dynamic where if you were clever, created compelling tweets that shared new information, you got to have these conversations and learn from them. And unlike many social media platforms, which have this kind of dynamic where a lot of the success accrues to those who are most conventionally attractive, with exceptions, Twitter was always a platform that de-emphasized physical appearance. And many of the friendships I made were actually with anonymous individuals who, to this day, I don't know what they look like. Now, the other side of all this is that Twitter's relatively flat appearance, its relatively broad rules, which allowed anonymity and allowed you to say really almost anything, also made it a common platform for harassment. You can freely converse with just about anyone you want, but also that means on the platform, basically anyone can say basically anything to you. And many of the people there are assholes. A small tweet from a small account that was intended for an audience of their followers who appreciated the subtle joke could easily be, quote, tweeted by a much larger account with many followers who will absolutely never understand the joke. And those followers would often then run into the replies of the original tweeter, leaving them in a vulnerable position where they would get harassed, death threats, and this problem was compounded for women and people of color on the platform who routinely had a worse experience with a massive increase in threats. Now, like many things Twitter, this dynamic is both good and bad. The quote tweet is often how I ended up finding many of my favorite accounts because people I trusted would amplify people they trusted and I could read their tweets with that additional context. However, now things for Twitter are really kind of in the crapper. Elon Musk purchased Twitter for about $44 billion, though of course that isn't all his money. He had a few other investors and got some loans. And those loans are the really nasty part because now Elon has to pay over $1 billion per year just to handle the interest from the loans to purchase it. This is a problem because Twitter has basically never been consistently profitable. They have struggled to build up a base of advertisers who want to advertise next to the chaotic and random bullshit that made Twitter a unique and engaging platform. This historical struggle with maintainable profitability combined with the loans that Elon took out meant from day one, Elon had to make sure that he didn't just maintain Twitter as it was, but quickly increase the amount Twitter was making. What instead happened is Elon has made it much worse. Shortly after he took over, he began reinstating a variety of accounts, many of whom are just Nazis. And those who aren't Nazis are real assholes. This, combined with many of Elon Musk's other behaviors, has led to a massive exodus of advertisers from Twitter. Numbers vary, but it seems to be over half are now gone. Plus... Having all these new assholes around mean that the problems with harassment have gotten worse, especially with Elon basically firing anyone in charge of actually paying attention to the reports people make about harassment or hate speech or things like that. This drives off many of the people on Twitter who were making compelling, interesting, clever content because they don't want to engage with the Nazis. So Elon needs to pay over a billion dollars a year just to cover the interest. His advertising revenue is weighed down and users, Elon says they're up, but I think activity among them is probably down. And we can see this 
by Elon's own view count, which supposedly led to him firing an engineer for pointing out to Elon that he's just not as popular as he used to be. So how is Elon going to make some more revenue for Twitter? His solution? A new version of Twitter Blue, Twitter's subscription service that would now come with a verified blue check. This would cost $8 or $11 if you bought it on iOS, and Elon expected massive uptake of this new subscription. When it initially launched with the new checkmark, there was a massive problem with impersonation. People using the checkmark to pretend to be people they weren't. Many had tried to warn Elon that this was going to happen, but Elon was not interested in hearing it. On the plus side, at least, I'm sure we've seen the massive uptake that Elon predicted that will help make sure that Twitter survives, right? Wrong. The information has reported that Twitter has convinced about 290,000 total people to subscribe to Twitter Blue. This is about 28 million in total annual revenue, or about 1 40th of the new interest on Elon's loans ignoring additional costs required to service these Twitter Blue accounts and does not even come close to replacing the lost advertiser revenue for Twitter. Elon has continued to double down on this Twitter Blue transition, gaining new features like long tweets, a thing everyone was demanding behind it, and has made clear his intention to boost Twitter Blue in the algorithm and use it as the ultimate signaling mechanism for Twitter, meaning... Everyone on Twitter's timeline is about to be decided by those willing to pay Elon Musk for a blue check mark. This will almost certainly make the deteriorating timeline even worse as Elon desperately tries to extract money from this platform. Meanwhile, Elon has fired most of the engineers at Twitter and the result has been a gradual collapse of core site functionality. There was a period a few days ago where the only way you could tweet was by scheduling it. Other people can't send DMs, API access has been cut off, Twitter can't pay its rent, and apparently now if you want to tweet a lot or follow a lot, you're going to need to subscribe to Twitter Blue. Now you may think, well, maybe that's okay as long as Elon has worked on reaching out to advertisers and replacing that revenue. Elon promised that he would create a council to help oversee advertiser safety and make sure that Twitter remained that. He hasn't. This video is mostly just me lamenting that my favorite social media platform is dying and specifically that this billionaire is able to go out and destroy it on a whim basically to make a joke and beyond just owning it he seems determined to leave it absolutely gutted and destroyed bordering on unsalvageable for when the banks eventually own it because Elon is unable to pay his debts. I'll miss it, but social media platforms come and go, forums come and go, blogs come and go. The only constant is change. I'm hoping that this changes how many people see the self-described techno king Elon Musk, and it shows them that he is far from infallible, and actually, often seems to have no idea what he is doing.